Hey everybody, it's Anna McKinley here. I am very, very excited to bring you this conversation because oh, I'm bringing to you today Lydia Sanchez, who is a relationship breakthrough specialist, but not just in the traditional relationship way. We're talking about breakthroughs in your relationship with the cosmos, with yourself, with your own potential, with, with what is possible for you in your life, as well as <laughs> the other people in your life. So I'm very excited about this because, you know, if you if you actually feel like you want more connection, if you feel like you want more fulfillment, if you feel like you're a you know, just a bit stuck. If you feel that you want to allow more love into your life and you want to allow more abundance in your life, you are so in the right place. Every time Lydia and I have conversations about this, it's just like boom, boom, sparks. <laughs> Lydia's seeing it too. So just a very brief introduction. There's a chance that we haven't met yet. So if you haven't come across me yet, I'm Anna McKinley and I am absolutely passionate about helping particularly women in business to be able to tap into your potential so that you can actually live a life of fulfillment, have a fulfilling career in business and still do the other things that you want to do, whether it's showing up as the parent you want to be, having vibrant health, having great relationships, having financial abundance, living the life that you choose. Because my absolute belief is that we are all not only worthy of that, but that's what we came here for, isn't it? Right? To live a life that yeah. we can be absolutely satisfied with. So I'm very excited to bring you Lydia because that's what we're going to be talking about today. Lydia and I have known each other for a few years now. We are both um, passionate explorers of the law of attraction and how we can create our, not just how we can, how we do create our own reality how we can leverage that so that we can actually create the reality that we love and desire. So just before I hop on and get Lydia to introduce and we'll dive into some great stuff, I would love to hear from those of you who are joining live. It's fantastic to have you here always. Drop a note in the in the um, below in our chat so that we know where you're joining from. We'll just drop hashtag live so that we know you're here. Anyone who is catching the replay, then let us know you're here as well. Drop a hashtag replay. And as we go through, our aim here is to give you some boom, aha, light bulb nugget takeaways that you go, wow, this is shifting something. I can use this in my life right now to uplift and to help me get more of the experiences I want in life, right? So when you have those moments, we would love it if you could share what those are below as well. Just let us know. All right, so Lydia, I've given a brief introduction. Lydia, Lydia um, has been um, really creating amazing things in her life for a while. So is there anything else, first by way of introduction, Lydia, that you'd like to, anything we should oh. be aware of? <laughs> first of all, my dear, I mean, I'm, I'm so, I feel so honored to be here sharing a space with you and your beautiful audience. I'm excited to be here. And as you mentioned, I mean, well, we met in this, in our paths crossed when we were discovering more information about how law of attraction really works, like the secret behind the secret, right? So I am a free, I'm a certified freedom leader, master facilitator, a regular specialist, and it is my passion to help more women to build field relationships they can really enjoy themselves feeling confident confident to be their true selves feeling free oh, and experience a better life experience right yes yes so good, exactly. so good. and feel free to drop a woohoo or a yes if you like the idea of feeling more free in your life and relationships. So good. So it, um, a little while ago now when I was engaging with um, with you in some other playgrounds um, and we were doing some things and mm -hmm. you shared that your story that actually you weren't always in the space of helping us in our relationships, right? Because you spent a lot mm -hmm. of your life in what would seem like quite a different area, which is finances and <laughs> that side of things. 
I suppose, relationship with money, right? So would you like to share with us, how, you know, how did you actually come to be a relationship breakthrough specialist? <laughs> yes, I mean, seriously, it's like I love the story of my life because, yes, my passion since I was like, since right? It's been finances, money, like the uh, New York Stock Exchange or London or Paris or Frankfurt. It was like currencies and money, 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 money. And I have a master's degree in finance. And I still love finances. And, and how the, it's a game when we're talking about money. But then, I mean, I decided to, to, to focus on need to, to, to really dig into relationships because, I mean, and uh, we have, have a relationship with everything, right? right? So with our partners, family, friends, sons, daughters, teachers, colleagues, boss, the lady of the supermarket, the lady of the bank, and money. But most importantly, we have a relationship with ourselves. That's why mm -hmm. I, when I discover like the core of everything that we are experiencing, it's like in the relationship within ourselves. It was like I want to do that, right? Right, right, right. That's yeah. That's my journey. I love that, and and it all starts. It's funny, isn't it? How we start. So many of us start from looking at outside stuff and we peel back the layers and peel back the layers and it's like boom aha actually if I get my relationship with myself right then everything else is going to be that much better yeah <laughs> my health because relationship with self relationship with our body my my relationship with money my relationship with other people my satisfaction in my career my relationship with my kids all of that's going to be better when we're centered in ourselves and yet you know, how often do we actually really openly talk about that, right? So, and speaking of that too, I'd just love to share with everyone who's watching because part of this whole, when we when we wake up to how things unfold in our lives, and again, everyone who's joining live, fantastic to have you here. Do feel free to drop your nuggets or simply to say hi in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. We are going to be covering a lot, so also... If you would like to receive a copy of the show notes afterwards to say if you like having to take notes, um, just let us know below. I'll get those to you. Uh, that way you can focus on what we're sharing. So one of the, the really cool things that we start to notice when we start to actually engage with this idea of creating reality is the mechanism of synchronicity, right? right. So I was sharing with Lydia just the other day, um, and Lydia, I'll, I'll invite you to comment on this, but Today is in New Zealand. It's the it's the eighth of November, mm -hmm. at um, and it's you know. Let me just look at the time. In just under ten hours, the moon is going to be in a full eclipse, right? Full moon, full eclipse. And I was listening to some astrologers, and they're going. One of the things that's special about this one is it's in the sign of Aries. What does that mean? It's about our relationship with ourselves, self love, self care. And we just happened to be having this conversation about relationships and, and self-love. The stars are just one of those examples, right? The stars have aligned. Well, the, in this case, the moon has aligned for us. <laughs> but these little things, these synchronic synchronicities happen all the time. So I want to come back to that question of, of self-love and how we build a relationship with ourselves. But I'm also curious, Lydia, about your experience around that mechanism of synchronicity and how that plays into this as well in relationships or with money or anything in relationships or money mm -hmm. like uh, like uh, i lost you a little bit like synchronicities in the topic right yeah. i will i got so excited about the question i'll just say it really simply what's your take on the mechanism of synchronicity and how it comes into this <sighs> That's a beautiful question. And I would say that, first of all, the mechanism of synchronicity is always working, right? Whether we notice it or not, in my perception, it's always working. Just, I mean, just to say, at, at this very 
moment that we lost a little bit of connection. It is my belief and my perception that the mechanism of synchronicity is in there, right? So, about when we're talking about relationships in general or with money or with ourselves, you are able to notice the mechanism of synchronicity in what we call like maybe you see an 1111 or a 4444 or a 3333 or maybe the lady in the bank is telling you like maybe wake up that morning feeling awesome and you go to the bank and they're telling you oh my gosh you look beautiful you're a beautiful woman so those kind of synchronicities in which your physical experience okay is is showing you, confirming you, giving you information about yours and your emotions. It's amazing. Mm. It's amazing. And the more, because some, I remember once Nick Bro said, like, your inner being, your inner guidance, source, God, they, it's, it's the how, right? And then I remember yeah. Ken Peterson, you know, Ken Peterson, he said, mechanism of synchronicity is the how. By that I mean, or they mean, we mean that when we have a desire, okay, like for example, ooh, I will love like a cup of coffee with whipped cream, like in 10 minutes. And suddenly, the mechanism of synchronicity, source, God, your inner being, they deliver, delivers. And after 10, 10 minutes, there's a friend or, or somebody bringing you that cup of coffee with a whipped cream, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the more we notice those magical moments, in, we can call it little things, but they are not little because they are giving us satisfaction, right? The mm. more we're going to notice that mechanism of synchronicity in like, and I'm going to quote unquote the big things like, I don't know, thousands, thousands of dollars or my dream love relationship or, or my partner giving me a beautiful present or feeling awesome, this and this and that. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, totally, totally. And one of the beautiful things, I mean, if we're talking about relationships, creating loving relationships, um, there's these little synchronicities in terms of being in the right place at the right time or anticipating that someone's going to say something or be somewhere or, yeah, you know, I'd really love a cup of coffee in 10 minutes. So we just, oh, there just happens to be a Starbucks that I'm just driving past. What a coincidence. I'll go in there and then we meet someone and whatever right or we overhear something so it's those little things but i love what you say is that um it's not about the big stuff it's about the little breadcrumbs <laughs> it's about those little yeah. each time something like that happens it is like um whether we think of it as source or god or um our inner being or our intuition it's like it's there saying hi i've got you back <laughs> right so exactly. should we talk about um because that flows quite nicely into um, our relationship with ourselves, right? So right. should we talk about that? Because I know that's something you're passionate about. Um, and, yeah, in terms of that, how does our relationship with ourselves play into our relationship with our external world and other people from your point of view? No, oh, it's everything. It, it's everything. And I have evidence. I have evidence with my students, clients, with myself, with my partner in life, with my daughter. It's yeah. everything. Once I remember I share in these amazing groups in, in which, I mean, we are part of them, that mm. I share how my daughter was like daydreaming, okay, about her birthday. It was October. Her birthday is on January, okay? And she was like daydreaming, yes, and I'm gonna, uh, and she was talking like 
not in future tense, but in present tense. And I'm waking up and, and we're gonna go and we're going to Starbucks and we are and I'm having this milkshake. And, and she was talking in present tense, and I'm having this and this and this and this and that. And then we're gonna go to Walmart because I mean there's like a bunch of toys, right? So I'm and I'm gonna get like a toys because you promised me that on my birthday it's my yes day. And I was just <laughs> appreciating her. She was daydreaming, and I share that on our groups. And Dave, one of my uh, our friends, I mean, I adore him. He answers, Lydia, this is so beautiful. She knows her worth. And I was like, wow, yes. My kid, kids, they know their worth. So the moment, again, we treasure how valuable we are just because that we don't have to prove anything. And just, just when, when we're talking about take care of yourself, take care about the way you feel, I really mean that. Take care about, I mean, take care about yourself, like enjoying your bath, shower, your cup of coffee, giving you some treats, taking care of yourself because first of all, you deserve it. And the moment you're doing that, it's just like uh, putting your ox oxygen first, you know, like on the yeah. air flies that, of course, we need to breathe in first so we can spread our energy and our lives and share our lives ones, right? So that's mm -hmm. why self-love, caring about self, it is so important because, and, and, I mean, you can, you can ask your kids, what do you prefer? Like a happy mom, a stressed mom, a happy dad, or a stressed dad? And the answer is very easy, right? Right? Yeah. So the more I take care, or you, you take care about yourself, treating yourself with things that make you happy, I mean... Yeah, that's the key. Oh, right? well, that's just, yeah. Can I draw out something? Because what you've said is so so important. And I mean, self love means different things to different people, right? But often with self love, we start, and again, it's the same thing. We start with what does that mean in the material outside world, right? It means that oh, if I love myself, then I have to take a bath, or if I love myself, then I have to do treats or get a pedicure or whatever. But it's, it's very different doing those things from a place of inside feeling I don't really deserve this or I'm not good enough or I should be doing something else, which is not loving, versus doing those things from a place of deserving it. And if we, I'm just, and I'm thinking of your daughter, that is just so beautiful. She was so solid in knowing that she's worthy of being, you know, showered with yeses, of having a yes day, right? I love that idea. It's a yes day, saying yes to herself. And that solid knowingness, because if we have that, I'd love your perspective, but what really came to me is if we have that acknowledgement and love for ourselves, that we love and appreciate ourselves and we just know that I am worthy. I am worthy simply because I am here. That's evidence that I'm worthy. I've got so much air to breathe. That's evidence that I'm worthy. I'm unique. That's evidence that I'm worthy. I don't need to do anything to be worthy of love. And if we can see ourselves from that perspective and know and love ourselves, on one level, it doesn't even matter whether or not we have the pedicure because we will feel so much better. But if we go out and do those things for ourselves, eat good food, drink good water, get out in the sunshine, have our nails done, whatever it is, the energy around that is going to be so much more nourishing, right? And I can see you nodding. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. I love that. And you're saying it perfectly. And what is popping in my mind right now, I remember I, 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 had, I have a friend and when we were in college, I remember once that I don't know if, if you have any Zealand store Zara Zara that is a, a Spanish store, but it is a very it is a, a store that has beautiful 
full clothes at a very, mm -hmm. let's call it affordable price for a student, okay? So, mm -hmm. so I remember I got her in her house and she was like with a lot of bags from this store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, you got yourself like a lot of trees, right? It's like, you just got new clothes. And she was like, yes, yes, but, oh, oh my gosh. I'm using this as an escape, you see? Because uh -huh. I wanted to feel good. But right now, I'm still feeling awful. And I was like, because you spend like a lot of money? And she was like, no, because it doesn't fulfill me. Yes, I have mm -hmm. new clothes. But it's like, I'm still feeling like this emptiness. So I love that you brought that into the table because yes, it is very important to treat ourselves from this energy. Like if we're taking care of a baby, we're taking care of a, a baby that, I mean, we all have our babies, right? And it's like, oh, this is so sweet. So treating ourselves from that energy that I'm going to take care of you right now, today, mm -hmm. because you deserve of it again not not because you are trying to to feel an empty space no but from this unconditional and again the word no conditions unconditional love no conditions to yourself right mm. so that is something very very important that when we are doing this when you are hearing us or Abraham Hicks or Bashar or Tony Robbins, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what we mean is care about yourself, but from this energy that I'm going to enjoy myself no matter what or who. Right? I love that. Yeah. So... <sighs> I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who um, who has been commenting in the comments. It's lovely to have you all here live. So thank you. Um, we love you all as well. So <laughs> thank you so much. I want to say a big thank you to Monica for that beautiful. Um, and there's someone else there on Facebook. Thank you so much for the love. And Lilia, it's so good. And Joe Kendrick, so great to have you all here. So sending the love right back at you. And on that vein, right? So this is a lovely conversation and I'm sure it's hitting a nerve with people listening because we kind of know intuitively that, you know, it feels good to give ourselves some recognition and, and to love ourselves, but gosh darn, doesn't it just feel so difficult sometimes? And what about all of that stuff that says, but if you love yourself, aren't you kind of being a bit, you know, um, what's, what's the energy around it in particular, a bit stuck up or something yes. along those sometimes right so there's a there's a few things that can get in the way of us unconditionally loving ourselves sometimes people can almost see it as as egocentric right so what's what are your thoughts on that in my experience i mean working with clients students my life experience it's like sometimes we i mean like the on underlying perception that people are practicing is not good enough, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when there's this negative, negative emotion in there, what people are trying is trying so hard to prove themselves, to make things right, to get like an A++++, plus 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 plus, right? Yeah. To, to make things it's like perfection. And mm -hmm. when we understand, I mean, of course, there's clearing what to do. But when, when people understand that, you know what? I don't have to prove anything because each and every day, each and every moment, we are learning. We are doing. We are, we are being, right? And I'm doing mm -hmm. everything in a sense, for the first time, every moment. I don't care if you're talking about brushing your teeth. Even though, I mean, later today, I'm going to go and brush my teeth. That is going to be the first time that I'm going to do so this day. At this moment, you see my point? 
Yeah, so absolutely. the more people realize right, that I don't care if maybe I've been teaching finances for 15 years and suddenly there's something new or something I didn't know about financial theory. I, I mean, there's no reason for me to feel bad about that because I know, I mean, we don't know everything. I just know what I know for what I'm doing right now. You see my mm-hmm. point? Mm-hmm. I absolutely do. See? And it's this is so powerful, right, though? I just want to draw what you just said out, that every single thing, and it doesn't matter if it's something we do a lot, every moment we're doing that yeah. moment this time. It's the first time we've done it in that particular energy is this particular version of ourselves. And that means that we get to evolve all the time, that we get to have a new experience all the time. And what I love is when we really embrace that, it means that we are being so present in the experience of being ourselves in each moment. So when people really grasp that, how can you see that playing out in their external reality? Right, so they're grasping that energy of I am worthy and of um, I'm just really living it. I mean, my goodness, when we live each moment for the first time, life can be such a playground, right? It's like even if even if this is an unpleasant experience, wow, I've never had this one before. It's like it's like that moment in the movie, right? (laughs) It's like oh, what's going to happen next? Exactly that energy. How does that then play out in your experience? In what in in what actually happens in our um. in the in the world around us. Hmm. Oh my gosh! It's like because when we get to that point, when people is getting to that point of realization of our awareness, it's like finally, as you're saying, they're grounded, living in the moment, mm-hmm. following the formula, and mm-hmm. physical reality. I mean, a lot of attraction. This is getting better and better and better, right? So mm-hmm. their physical reality. Their lives, even though we think like, oh, I don't know, my favorite beverage is giving me a lot of satisfaction. The more I'm grounding, enjoying every moment, this is exactly beverage. It's going to give me even more satisfaction and more satisfaction and more satisfaction through levels that I haven't had experience before. Okay. So, yeah. In, again with my students and with my clients it's so fulfilling because you see the transformation in them the breakthroughs how yeah, yeah. each and every time they are because there are layers but it's easier for them every time to recognize that there's there's something and you know what I'm going to break through and there's another, another layer so the more you are aware about this life experience, it is beyond your wildest dreams, seriously, in yeah, everything. Yeah. Love, relationships, yeah. money, synchronicities, beyond our wildest dreams. <laughs> because again, Man. and here's one thing mm-hmm. in my mind, this version of ourselves, it's learning. And it is not aware about what we're going to know tomorrow or experience tomorrow, right? Yeah, this is really powerful. So for um, and we will do a wrap up just for just for everybody. It's like oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> so many things we're touching on in this school. We will kind of do a wrap up, and as I've said as well, we are going to make show notes available of the key points that we summarize that we've gone through because, um, oh, um. Joe, I will get you those show notes. I clicked on the wrong thing. And I'm just going to say, let us know if you want the show notes um, because we are touching on a lot. And Lydia's just talked about something. I, I mean, for many of you, you will have heard this concept before, right? The power of the now. And the more we can live present in the now and leverage each moment and be focused in the now, that's really incredible. And it kind of helps us to actually escape 
the heaviness and the blockages and the anxiety and the worry and the depression and all of that stuff. Because when we're really doing what Lydia was saying and being fully present in the experience of what we're doing in this moment, <laughs> the other stuff doesn't exist because it's not in the moment with us. It's in the next moment or tomorrow or yesterday or whatever, right? So that's something. And Lydia shared something else really powerful, which is that actually the version that I am right now and the version that you are right now listening to this is different from who you were five minutes ago and from who you'll be in five minutes and from who you'll be tomorrow. And and that's not just woo-woo stuff. It's also your brain is wired differently now than it was five minutes ago because you've been thinking different things and it will be again tomorrow. Your body is different because cells have replicated to express how you're feeling right now. So it's not just in that kind of energetic law of, um, how we often think about law of attraction is just spiritual. It's actually all of this is reflected into the physicality of who you are and the physical 3D stuff. Now, can we get really deep? Drop a yes in the okay. chat if you'd like us to get really deep and metaphysical just for a moment. Who's, 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 who's up for some big concepts? Who wants to go deeper? <laughs> to go deeper. Well, we've got some other stuff to chat about. <laughs> we'll come back to the deeper stuff if we get a yes. Um, we might do it anyway because it's really fun. But look, I'm just really interested coming back to relationships. And we will do a recap, but I'm sure, I'm curious, and I'm sure those listening are curious as well. And what I'm curious about is, okay, this is all very well and good to talk about. But if I actually want to make a difference um, in my life right now, and I'm hearing that the place to start is that I need to have love for myself, I need to appreciate myself, be kind for my, to myself and all that stuff, and that sounds all, all well and good, but quite frankly, I've got some resistance to it, hypothetically. Um, yeah. What are some practical things that people can do to actually help be kinder towards ourselves? It's not, not in the doing sense, but in terms of the energy we give to ourselves. Because what we were talking about before is that is that actually it starts with kind of our attitude towards ourselves rather than anything we're doing. So what tips do you have for people? Yeah. No, I have so many tips but very easy because we, we love ease right we love yeah, yeah. ease they totally get it i mean into this is i mean your audience they know about the offer attraction so the moment for your audience like they're they're ready you're ready for this so a very easy way is like waking up in the morning just waking up give yourself five minutes we don't ask for more okay just to appreciate because yes people are saying that this is a new day and it's beautiful and we're alive and this and this and that but yes i totally get you when you're not feeling good you're not feeling good so even if you're going through a rough moment give yourself those five minutes and say that's okay you know mm -hmm. be nice to yourself just for five minutes you know what i don't like my, my life as soon as you wake up in the morning, you get, I don't like my life right now. And that's okay. Mm. I just feel the relief in that because the most important thing is for us, again, the inner state. Circumstances yeah. don't matter. So that yeah. inner state is like, it feels liberating. You know what? Yes, I don't like my life right now. And it's okay. It's okay. That's it. Mm. It's Mm. Just like a like a warm hug that we're giving to ourselves. If you are in that situation in which you are struggling right, right now in your life, or that you're noticing that things are not happening in your favor, as you've heard all of us telling you, that, right? That's okay. I mean, be nice to yourself in that sense. Okay. Yeah. Because when you mm. are that simple you're accepting your reality 
And as Bashar says, you cannot change what you don't own. So the moment that you are doing that, in a sense, you're accepting your life and be able to change it. You see? It's 100%. And it's, it's very you practically. Have? It's like if we're lost, right? And sometimes it can, especially now, I mean, how many people are feeling lost in life? I don't know where to go. Life feels so unpredictable. I mean, especially today, the, the, the selection day in the United States, I think, right? So many, so much uncertainty. And it can be very easy to slip into that negative energy that's floating around. There's this, if we want negative energy, <laughs> there's plenty out there to let in, right? Um, and so it, it can be very easy to, <laughs> ugh. and that then reflects on how we're looking at our life and what am I doing wrong and blah, 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 blah. comparing ourselves to other people, right? So one of the things, what, what's really beautiful here is it's kind of like if we're lost and we want to find our way out, the very first thing we have to do is go, right, well, where am I? And be okay with that. Yeah. And once we're okay with that, it gives us a solid place to start. Okay, so what feels like the next, the next best step? Which direction feels right with the next step and the next step and the next step? Is that what we're talking about here? Yes, but don't try to figure it out. My intention is like, I mean, just as a tip, because again, this is law of attraction. Okay, so as soon as they wake up, it's like, you know what? I feel I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling cranky. I don't feel like, or I have to go to work. Just tell to yourself, yes, I don't like it. And that, that's okay. Yeah. Just tell to yourself those words. That's okay. Yeah. And you're going to feel relief in your body. You're going to feel relief. Okay. Yeah. That's what I want you. That's my intention. Right. That's what, what we want you to feel, relief. Because after that, okay, I'm doing that, you're not trying to fix or solve right there anything. You're just with you, accepting your reality, treasuring, honoring your feelings, mm -hmm. taking care of yourself. You see my point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 100%. like telling your kid. It's like telling your kid, like, when when a kid is disappointed, I mean, I see that with my daughter, like, she's disappointed sometimes, and it's like, it's okay, my dear. Things, I mean, or she feels frustration. I just hug her and tell mm -hmm. her, you know what? I totally get you. This is frustration. You're frustrated. Things are not the way you were expecting to be, and that's okay. But sweetie, they are not what you are expecting yet. But it is just like a warm hug to ourselves. You know what? I'm yeah. disappointed. I don't like it, or I feel feel frustration, and that's okay. Yeah, that right? is so powerful. It's in a way, it's giving ourselves the permission slip to be human. Not the kind of toxic yes. positivity thing. Not that we have to feel we have to feel good all the time. Because if we feel bad, somehow we're attracting that bad stuff to us. We just got to back up. It's okay to be human and have a human experience, and it's okay to be where we're at right now. And it's just the now. I love how you said, "I'm not there yet," and yeah. we can let it. Under yeah. I'd just like to pick up on something else that you said as well, which is the. It's not about trying to figure out how, because that's where we often get so tangled up, right? And whether we look at it from a pure law of attraction point of view or whether we look at it from a neuroscience point of view or, or, or whatever, our cognitive brain, <laughs> our mind, that little bit of our brain that thinks it's in charge, so not. It's so sweet that, that, that we have this bit of our yeah. brain which is like 5 to 10% of our capacity which likes to think it's in control and... Trust me, my one's really big. It, 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 it like wants to run the show. Um, it's not really designed to make choices for us, and it does not have access to the information to be able to figure out all of the how of, of how to bring about all of the things that we want. And whether we think of it as law of attraction or whether we think of it as our intuition or whether we think of it as our subconscious mind, 
doesn't really matter that much so long as we're going okay I'm not trying to figure it all out myself because it's when we do that that we get stuck in that expectation right and and then as soon as one thing doesn't go the way we expected it we end up like your daughter feeling so frustrated but it's supposed to play out like this and now what am I going to do right and we need to say to our inner selves and those will need it's a choice we can make we can choose to say to our inner selves yeah it's just not played out the way I expected to and that's okay that's okay that's okay. Yeah. I love that. That, that. Can I just share it's with you a little thing? It's my 10th anniversary this year. I'm celebrating my 10th anniversary of when I completely burned out and ended up leaving my old career because it was just, oh, my goodness, I've just, just about killed myself from overwork, um, which was a very enlightening experience. And one of the things that really helped me to climb back out of that pit was this concept of acceptance of reality because that's also a cognitive behavioral um, therapy technique right cbt this this notion that once we accept our reality and make peace with our reality we can release a whole lot of stress that we'd otherwise carry around by trying to push against things that are outside of our control right and in a way that's the same thing we're talking about here wherever we're at once we can actually be okay with that and that includes how we're feeling it's like boom the more we practice that it can lift a load off and once we do that then we can move into that different energetic space and be more accepting and loving of ourselves so let's talk about because you are after all a relationship breakthrough specialist um for someone who's struggling to experience that and and there is a lot of this going around again that, that in this time the last couple of years there's been so much disconnection so for someone who's struggling to experience love or connection in their lives whether they're in a relationship but they're just not feeling that or, or just not feeling that they can let the love in or whether they're not in a relationship and wanting a fulfilling relationship um what would for you would be the number one thing for someone to focus on to help them bring more or allow more love and connection in yeah and it, it is it is the same inner mm. inner work 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 inner work, inner work. You can't <laughs> do the other way you feel <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it is magical my dear Anna, it is my God. Through the mm -hmm. pandemic, I, I had clients that they were about to get fight for divorce. And I was like, okay, I mean, we are freedom leaders, right? Right? So we like freedom and free will like a lot. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you're free. This is your free will. And then we were working. Uh, I mean, through the sessions and everything. And at the end, it was like breakthrough, a breakthrough and then the realization that whatever they were, um, let's say, um, noticing about their partners, it was about themselves. And as a matter of fact, the partner is telling you information about you that you were thinking prior to like, like their actions yeah. and once people is like oh my gosh yes I totally accept that fact yeah. and he's telling me that if she's telling me that is because I was telling that to myself I totally get it so when people start like accepting that and the fact that a relationship is a mirror then it's like a oh my gosh a beautiful transformation in their love relationships in my experience working with clients i mean uh, and if they are in a love relationship there hasn't been any breakthrough i mean ups uh, so far on the contrary they are more like having relationships and if they are singles the clients that i have that they are are still singles is that now they are having the their breakthroughs or they clarifying like what emotions and this and that 
and they feel finally fulfilled without the need of having a partner, right? And you know what? something, so, you've just mentioned something. How many of them, once they get to that point where actually I know not, I no longer need this to feel good in myself because I'm fulfilled in myself, how often would they then just happen to meet someone who they really click with? Right? Exactly. That's how I met Exactly. <laughs> It's just quite funny. <laughs> I know I'm finally I'm in a place where I don't need anybody. Oh hi. <laughs> yeah. And funny. then you're gonna have a bunch of or prospects. But again, it's like yeah. and I remember when I was working with one and, 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 and he was single and I was like desperate to 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 have like a partner. I told him, you know what, right now, seriously, you don't want a partner right now. With that energy that you're having, because if you have a partner right now with that energy, it's going to be like a, like, let's say, like a shake of mixed energy and negative emotions that, no, 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 please do your, your inner work. And then you're going to have like this amazing partner in your life. And it was like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm guessing we're going to do a quick wrap up. Wrap up. So we could talk for hours about this, and we do sometimes talk for hours about this stuff. I know. <laughs> so, um, we'll do a quick wrap up, and then I think for anyone who wants to stick around because we've got something deep and metaphysical, I will just um, yeah, do some reflection though. So the thing to bear in mind. And, and let me just do a quick recap, actually, of some of the key things that have that have come out. And do stick around because I know Lydia has something that that she is wanting to make a very special something for that she wants, she's wanting to make available to you as well. I would also like to say these manifestation Mondays. I've got so many fabulous, uplifting people lined up ready to um, come and chat as well. So if you want to receive reminders for future Manifestation Mondays. And also so you can get the replays of, of this and past calls. Let me know below and I'll get you on that um, on the, that reminder list so that um, because <laughs> I've got lots of goodies coming up just in time for Thanksgiving for those of you in the States and for Christmas and for New Year's. Um, and there's always always nuggets and gems for us about how we can intentionally create the life that we want and again I say it doesn't actually matter which kind of perspective or framework we come from whether we're going it's law of attraction it's neuroscience it's high performance coaching which uses the same tools we just put it in different terms um Whichever frame we put on these things, the same stuff works for us to be able to intentionally create what we want to experience in life. And Lydia, is it okay with you if I just reflect back some of the key nuggets I've noticed? And for those of you watching, feel free to drop what your biggest takeaways are, because when we do a recap like this, we can take it away and go, mm, there's some stuff I can play with. So, and I've got quite a list here. Now, the very, very first thing, and this is no surprise to any of us, right? But our relationship with ourself, that self-love comes first, because without that, nothing else is really going to work. Um, whatever we experience, if we're experiencing it from that energy of I'm not okay with myself, <laughs> it's it's not going to play out the same. We're not going to show up the same. And we're certainly not going to enjoy it as much, right? So self-love, self-care means different things to different people. But it first up is an inside game, just like everything else. And the key thing here is remembering, actually, that, yeah, you're worth it. You absolutely are worth it. Um, it's, it's about being in that place of loving and appreciating ourselves first, and then all of that other stuff around treating ourselves to things and having the pedicure or the nice coffee or what or, or the good food or whatever it is, that comes second because we're going to get so much more out of it. And it's the same with those relationships. So, but I do love the way, Lydia, that you said, and do remember to treat yourself. I love the idea of yes days. So the way that your daughter gets a yes day for her birthday, I'm thinking, yeah, I could do with one of those a week. Maybe every day is actually, yeah, every day is a yes day for Anna. <laughs> 
<laughs> why not, right? Yeah. So you miss it yourself every day. Um, and that's the thing. If we do that inside work, then our relationships with others will take care of themselves. There's something really very powerful that Lydia was just sharing, which is that what we experience from other people in our lives is a reflection back to us of what is active for us right so the way that other people treat us and this is again why that self-love is so important first if people are treating us disrespectfully or treating us in unkind ways or saying things to us that feel hurtful or not seeing us not valuing us then we have to look inside first and see and ask ourselves the question is there something in my belief system about myself that this is reflecting back to me um, that it's not okay to stand up for myself or that or that I'm not worthy of being treated well or if I'm not respecting myself or if I'm judging myself, am I actually bringing that out in the other person unintentionally um, or interpreting things, you know, and, and off, there's degrees, right? But if it's something that someone said or body language that we're interpreting a certain way, we're, we're seeing that through the filter of our own beliefs as well. So, that's a really useful one because it means then that in our relationships, what we're experiencing, we can look at that as feedback, right? That yeah. I get to choose then what to do with it, right? I always have free will, but it's feedback. And I'm given I'm given that choice and that information, which which gives us back the power, right? And within that whole frame, you mentioned, and I see this too with clients. I I'm going to be really upfront. I have never once worked with a client that hasn't had some degree of that not not good enoughness or that having having a rock solid belief in our self worth. Um, I've never yet had someone who was 100% locked in with that because we're told so often from so from different places that that there's something wrong with us, right? Often people who want to sell us something, there has to be something wrong with us that we have to fix by filling that gap with something. And when we're kids and all of that type of thing, um, that perfectionism is is often a symptom of it, right? I have to I have to do this or, or or follow the right system or get the right result or have the right things or be perfect. So again, just acknowledge those things. Um, their feedback as well and they're, they're telling ourselves that maybe I can be okay with myself as I am for me the big thing that I'm always taking away from these conversations Lydia is it's okay doesn't matter how you feel doesn't matter where you're at right now it doesn't matter what the external circumstances are it's okay it's okay it's okay and the next moment will be different and the next moment will be different um a final little gem that Lydia dropped is so powerful. And this is like the secret to a happy life. Right? We, we go around going, oh, my goodness, what's the secret to being a happy life? This moment, I'm living for the first time. And this moment, I will never get again. I get to live it just this once. So let's savor it. No matter what's going on, and it, it might be something that I don't like, but that part of the movie will be over soon. And remember, that's what makes the movie exciting is we have these you know, story arcs that we follow. So just really being present in each moment, whether it's with ourselves or with the other people in our life, right? Giving yourself that that right. warm, warm fuzzy and a hug. So um, those are some, and there are a whole lot of other things in my notes. <laughs> those are the key things that I'm drawing out. Lydia, do you want to add any other nuggets from our conversation? Oh, God. I mean, no, you put it that perfectly clear and it is like the to wrap things up it's the message that that it's my desire my intention to share with my clients and with my students right so you put it perfectly well and as you're saying every moment is new every, every moment you are a new version of yourself therefore you're doing everything best of your ability and you're perfect right the more you practice those thoughts those perceptions that they do serve you the more you're going to expand and have better life experiences yeah absolutely i love it i love it i love it, I love it. and that that is not just okay that is perfect so um Actually, before we go any further, you have something you want to 
make available to people, right? If, if So a couple of things. If anyone loves this energy, <laughs> wants an extra dose of Lydia, she's on Instagram, so you can connect with Lydia on Instagram. And I've just popped it up on the screen there. But Lydia, you, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You have something coming up. <laughs> yes, I. We have something coming up. I mean, following an inspire action, we are eight freedom leaders from six countries, with six eight different topics, and we're gathered mm. to, got together like in this beautiful event that we are creating for you. So save the date, November 19 and November 20th, we're gonna have this event for you. And your audience, I mean, because I know they are beautiful people just like you, they're gonna get like a, a special discount. So we are creating this event again in which our intention is for you to be ready to be present for your holidays. Right? Because sometimes when Hanukkah, Christmas, or the uh, New Year's, or whatever is you're coming, those holidays, it's like uh, 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 overwhelming feelings, worry feelings, Blah, 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 blah. So our option is for, for more people to really enjoy themselves. So again, it's this that you're going to have in one container for two days. And there are a lot of topics from energy, work, money, relationships, uh, love, inner child work, tough conversations, fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, and like a party, baby. <laughs> yeah, party, so Christmas party. It's the 18th and the 19th, right, of November. 19th and 20th. Oh, I'm glad it's I checked. Saturday and that. Sunday. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, we start at, at 10 a.m. Eastern time of this, this content. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Oh, good. <laughs> Who's the dates for everyone? Yeah, and um, yeah, if, if that's something that intrigues you and you and you want more details, connect with Lydia on Instagram and she'll send you all of the details about it. And make sure she gives you that 25% discount because we're about the abundance, right? <laughs> so good. Absolutely. So, so, so wrapping up. Again, let us know. I'll just pop that to one side. Let us know if you want. The show notes just so you can keep a track pull out your own nuggets let me know below and also if you'd like reminders of future calls like this one so that you know it's all different perspectives different tools different nuggets to help you create the life that you really want because different things work for different people <laughs> and we're all learning so much as we go through this journey right so so just before we wrap up um Shall we go deep? Because we were talking just before about how the inner work is the most important thing to get what we want in life. And we were talking about how other people have this way of reflecting back to us what we've got going on internally. But that's really just scratching the surface about how we create reality, right, Lydia? We were talking about this um, before we started and we started getting very Albert Einstein-y. <laughs> so what... Oh, I'll hand it over to you. You shared a really profound insight um, or concept with me around the nature of reality and matter. Do you remember what we were talking about? Yes. When I was sharing this interstate mm. matter, right? And here's the thing. Maybe some of you have heard this from Bashar. But this is a reminding, reminder right here now. Again, circumstances, no matter what, don't matter. And by matter, what they mean is matter, as in materialized matter. 
circumstances don't matter, do not create. Inner state matters. Your inner state is the one that matters and the one that is going to create that matter, that physicality, that creation. Yeah, So exactly. Right? So what we think matters, what we feel matters, the inner state is the starting point. And, and to put it really, really short, thoughts become things, right? And I love that because um, Albert Einstein, who, who told us E equals MC squared, what does that mean? That means actually matter is just energy in another form. In fact, it's not even energy in another form. Matter is energy that's vibrating incredibly slowly, <laughs> mind-bogglingly slowly, but it's energy, right? Um, right. And, you know, there's, there's all sorts of people who are picking at the, at the foundations of reality and quantum physics who are saying things like, actually, really, the particles of which everything's made are really just probability waves that occasionally drop into, <laughs> into a solid state. It's like, but the fundamental thing, I mean, we, we go, yeah, but that's not how it feels. But the fundamental thing for us to remember is that thoughts become things. Things don't become thoughts. Thoughts become things, right? Is that a fair way of summarizing it, Lydia? Yeah, and I would, I would, I would add like, no, again, and try. My, here's an invitation for all of you: is like try to perceive things from different lenses. Is like mm. that no matter the circumstances. And I have in everything in my mind, no matter the, circum the circumstance, understand that that circumstance is not creating another equal circumstance like that. Okay? What is creating another circumstance like that, it's my innate, your inner state. What? 100%. Okay? It's, it's if I'm feeling... Clear. Right? If I'm feeling like negative emotions, worry, fear, okay, that's what I'm going to create. More circumstance that is going to make me feel more fear. Okay? That's yeah. law of attraction. That's why Bashar is saying inner state matters. If I'm feeling excitement, we are going to create circumstances, life experiences that are going to give, give, give us more. Just like this amazing talk is like, oh my gosh, for me, this is so exciting sharing with you audience, being here with you. I mean, my friend Anna McKinley is like, wow. So I'm sure <laughs> because, yeah, because Again, it's love attraction that tomorrow is going to be something more exciting. Okay. I don't know how like, right? The energy attracts, the energy attracts, and, and what we expect. I mean, have you noticed if we expect something, we get it, right? Whether it's whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter what we what we um what we get is tied into our expectations. So we've got to be aware of our expectations so that we can expect what we want. And that's 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 the thing where um this is something I'd really love to draw out of this what Lydia was sharing that matter uh, how did you put it? It's it's our inner state that matters because our inner state comes matter. Yeah, yeah circumstances, circumstances don't matter. Inner mm. state, inner state matters it's the one yeah, yeah. Oh, i mean it's like in humankind history it's like yeah. inner states are the ones creating inner states are where matter. we create <laughs> and, and the very profound from a very very practical point of view right this this is where you know i, I don't really like right. calling it yeah. work i like to think of it more as play and exploration but doing the work um is about being really um 
the word coming up is diligent, but consistent maybe, or aware, aware is a better word, aware that circumstances are not set, that our external circumstances are simply a reflection of what our past expectations and thoughts and energies have been. And that includes the energy of action, but the other stuff too, right? So it's just a reflection back. And one of the things that Albert Einstein said when he started getting to the uncomfortable awarenesses about how reality really works is he said, all of this reality is an illusion. And then he went on to say something like, oh, be a really persistent one, right? It feels really real. But the thing to yeah. hold on to is that actually the next moment and the next moment and the next moment are created by my inner state. And the thing that's tricky for us when it comes to manifesting, of course, and where we trip up is that sometimes there is a delay, a, a pregnancy, if you like, a gestation period, a, you know, things come to fruition in subtle ways over a period of time. And that's where, if I can pull it back to what we were talking about at the start, noticing those little things, as you, you were saying at the start, Lydia, it's about noticing all those little things that are lining up with what we want. And when we notice those, we can go, yeah. oh, yes, there's evidence there. There's evidence there. Yeah, yeah it does work. Because if we let mom, our mom and current reality feel too real to us, we're just going to keep repeating that, and that's when we get stuck, right? What are your thoughts on that? Right, because what we perpetuate is our perceptions, our thoughts. That's yeah. what we are perpetuating. It's, it is the same yeah. cycle so it is like the reality so fantastic oh, I love oh, these conversations. Oh, oh, oh. all right now, now before we do <laughs> i'm picking reality more well we've been going for a bit over an hour so we'll wrap up here i want to thank everybody who's been joining us live it's been fantastic to have you with us it's very welcome to drop those nuggets um i'm just going to pop up lydia's um Instagram again if anyone wants to connect further with Lydia or find out more about that event on the 19th and the 20th then um, connect there that's fantastic and um, let me know if you want show notes or again reminders if you want reminders of upcoming calls replays of past calls like this let me know so I will wrap up there I just want to say in light of we've just been having this deep conversation about the nature of reality, invitation for all of you, whether you're watching live or on the replay, our, a recurring theme of this conversation has been it's our inner state that creates our outer state. It's our inner relationship mm -hmm. with ourselves that creates our external relationships with other people and with the rest of reality, <laughs> right? So um, I invite you to think, what is one thing I want to take out of this conversation? And we've sort of touched on some very practical tips as well as a lot of ideas. What is one thing you want to take out of this conversation that you'd actually love to either dial up or start playing with in your life over the next 24 hours? It's optional. You've got free will. <laughs> well, that's my invitation to you. Yes. Lydia, I really, really appreciate you coming on and having this conversation. It's always so much fun. Um, do you have any last last thoughts or ahas that you would like to share with everyone before we wrap up here? Oh, my gosh. Again, my appreciation for all of your comments, for being here, sharing with you. This has been amazing. And again, my appreciation for this moment. Love you all. Love you too. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your evening and the rest of your day. We absolutely appreciate you being with us, whether it's live or energetically in the replay. And sending you lots of love. I will be back same time, same channel next week with ooh, ooh, <laughs> another another amazing person, Mary, Mary Elizabeth. Um, and I will be putting out a notice about that as well. And we're going to be actually diving more as well into this whole topic of how can we really uplift our interactions and relationships with other people? Because let's face it, this is a time of the year where sometimes the pressure comes on our relationships. Um, and we want it to be fun, don't we? Don't we want it to be fun? <laughs> So thank you again, everyone, for your lovely comments there. Um, 
absolutely love Kinga. So appreciate your comment there. Thank you so much for joining us as well. So glad you appreciate it. And Lynn Schussler William Williams and oh, so many more. Thank you. Love that so many people are getting some some juiciness out of this conversation. So go forth and spread the love and let's uplift the world with it. <laughs> I'll see you all next exactly. week. Thanks let's so much, Lydia. Lift up the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I will end it. <laughs>